Hi everyone, it's Miss Michelle. Um, I am here in the second grade classroom to show you everything you need to know for week six and how to use your works in your materials packets. So I would like to show you around. This is the second grade classroom where Sister Veronica is our teacher. Look at all of your great desks. All spaced out ready for you to go. There's a cool bulletin board that's got like a brick wall kind of a pattern. I got all these really awesome different billboard um, or bulletin board material papers at, on Amazon this summer. This is gold sparkly. That's where your baptismal garments will go when we learn about the sacrament of baptism in second grade. Um, so I would like to show you all of the information that you need this week. So I'm going to flip my camera around. Oh, look, it's the Blessed Mother. She is here with us today. Um, isn't this a cool um, bulletin board? I'll zoom out for a little bit for you. It looks like a sea to me, and so I call her Our Lady of the Sea. Okay, so the Blessed Mother is going to help us talk today about week six. So this is already like my fifth take of this video, and every other week before, I've been able to do it in one. <laughs> oh, sometimes Miss Michelle just has a rough day. Um, okay, so in your yellow folder, you will find your packet. Now, for my friends in first, second, and third grade, we will all be using the same activity this week. It's so good um, that when I planned it, I thought, oh, I've got so many friends in all these grades that'll really like to do this. Um, some of you in fourth and fifth grade, you might want to do this activity too. And you can. All you need to do is collect some materials from at home. Okay, so in your packet... First, second, and third graders, you will all have the same thing. You have your overview that has the scripture reading from this week, your questions that you'll answer with mom and dad. Definitely read the random fact. It's really wacky and awesome. And then you also will have these golden circles. These are your coins. Oh, oh. You dropped the table tent. You will have a table tent. This week's featured saint for week six is St. Albert the Great. Um, so our next prize drawing will be November 23rd for a $25 Barnes & Noble gift card. Um, I think that's wrong. Uh, you'll have to check your email for that. I forget if that's right or wrong. But make sure you um, are asking the, answering the questions on the inside. Especially this one here where it says, write down anything you'd like me to pray for at my holy hour in the Adoration Chapel. I've been actually going on and sitting in the Grand Church and praying for everyone. And um, what I actually do is I pray a decade of the rosary for, rosary for each of you. So if I know what to pray for, then I can ask the Blessed Mother and she can intercede for us. For you, actually. Okay, so here's your table tent for this week. And then first, second, third, and fourth graders, you'll all have this um, this just plain piece of white, like, kind of thicker paper, and then you have this purple thing here. This is our Knights of Columbus poster contest. And so if you've been with me at all in the past couple of years, you know what this is. We, we do this every year. Um, so you want to use the pa paper here that I have given you, and you can use any of these things, crayons, watercolors, color pencils, or markers. And um, so what I don't see on there is glitter sorry friends no glitter on these pages um, but what you really want to do is use your own artwork so you want to draw and not like copy somebody else or like have dad draw for you whatever um, but what you want to do is you must um, you want to draw a picture that represents what Christmas means to you um, and so here it says, keep Christ in Christmas is the theme that can be depicted with a manger scene. That's where we see um, baby Jesus laying in the manger um, in, the, in the stable uh, or um, any kind of picture that you want to draw from your home, your church or community that best conveys the spiritual meaning of Christmas to you as a kid. In addition to a visual image, your po so in, in addition to a drawing, so you're going to draw something in this thing, but you also have to have words. That's what a slogan is. It must have a slogan reflecting this theme. So it could be any kind of words that you want. It could be keep Christ in Christmas, these words here, 
or it could be something else. Um, so as you know, I, friends, I really like music a lot, so I think in terms of Christmas songs, and so maybe I might write the words, um, the first couple of words of O Holy Night, um, or Silent Night, or maybe even the first Noel, which is not actually a Christmas song, it's a song about Epiphany, but I think it's close enough. Um, so you have to have some kind of words in there. Um, if you are a friend who has a hard time writing and you really want it to be nice and neat, I think it's okay if mom or dad helps you do the writing part. Um, so then it gives you a little bit of information about how they'll judge the contest and um, the winners get prizes. Um, so we have had a lot of winners from my program in the past. Um, you get an ornament, um, you get your name in the compass, which is the paper that, the dias that, that comes from the diocese, and everyone who finishes a drawing, regardless of if you win or lose, or I mean, if you win or you don't win, I guess, everybody gets um, a free ice cream at Culver's, and so that's really wonderful. So that's what this is for. Um, only my fifth graders don't have this. They're not judging for fifth grade, grades one through four. But if my f fifth grade friends, you want to do one, I'll make sure you get a Culver's gift card too. Okay, so let me explain the talents, talents jar craft. It says, use the materials provided to help your child decorate a jar. Okay, so... When you picked up my, your materials, you should have picked up a brown paper bag. Let's take a look what's inside. Oh, it's a jar. And inside the jar, so these have these lids that come apart like this. That They're meant to do that. When I first opened one of these, when I first like knew what these were, because my mom didn't can things, um, it came apart and I'm like, oh, I broke it. But no, it's really what it's supposed to do. Okay, so inside your jar, you have a sticker. So I had these stickers made for you, and it says, My Talents. In, t in this Sunday's scripture reading, we are going to hear a parable um, that Jesus told about how, he gave, uh, how a master gave some servants talents. And the fun fact tells you kind of what a talent is. And so um, to one servant, he gave 10 talents. And that servant went out and made 10 more. And then to one servant, he gave five, and then that servant made five more. And then one servant, he gave one talent to, and then he buried it in a hole and didn't make any more talents back. So to help us remember this gospel story from Jesus, what I want you to do is to decorate this jar. And you can put this sticker on the jar anywhere you want. You can put it on the outside, um, you could find a way of taping it to the inside, but the sticky part is on the back. So that might be tricky if you're putting it on the inside. Um, what I did, I'll show you, um, I made two different jars because I had so much fun with this. So the first one, I just wanted it to be sparkly. So I took the jar, I just like wiped some glue on it, and I took it outside. Now, Miss N, when she watches this video, she's going to say, oh, Miss Michelle, because she does not a fan of glitter. So I did take it outside, and then I just, like, let the glitter fly in the air, and look, my whole jar is coated with golden glitter. Um, and so I forgot to put my sticker on the front before. Then I did take some spray paint, and I sealed it so that hopefully not too many glitters come off on my hands, because I want them to stay on the jar. But I, I personally think it's great. I like glitter. I feel like it's a gift from the Holy Spirit. Um, my driveway and my grass, because that's where I put the glitter on, are still totally covered in gold glitter. So you can do something really simple like this. I just took glue and some glitter I had laying around and glittered up a jar. But then I wanted to do something fancy. So I was like, oh, I really want to do this for myself. And so what I did was on my real one, I put my sticker on top of the lid. So I just um, kind of tried to put it in the middle and then I cut the edges off so that it could go on top of the jar. So that's what I did with my sticker. You don't have to do this, you can do whatever you want. Um, and then I um, didn't have many craft supplies at home and um, so I just used Sharpie markers because I did have those, and I just drew some flowers because I really like flowers. So this is my attempt at drawing a blue rose and a sunflower. 
and my favorite flower of all time, the lily of the valley. And I don't know what that is. It's just a random flower. And then um, I didn't like how I couldn't see it very well. And so I just put some like white tissue paper in here so that I could see my designs that I drew because I was really proud of them. I thought that they looked nice. For somebody who is not very good at drawing, I thought, oh goodness, maybe this is one of my hidden talents. Okay, so once you have your jar and it's all ready to go, you're going to take your um, golden circles, these are coins, and you're going to cut them out. And so here's what the back side looks like, here's what the front side looks like. And then on each of your 12 coins, I want you to write something that you're good at. And so here is one I wrote, I'm good at math. Miss Michelle is not a real athlete, but she is a mathlete. <laughs> I was on the math team when I was in high school and I once won a math meet. <laughs> and so I always joke with my boys when they ask for home help with their homework. And if it's like math, I'm like, well, yeah, I can help you. I'm a mathlete. <laughs> so I feel like I am good at math. And so I'm going to write that down on, oh, <laughs> and I'm going to put it in my talents jar. Now, when you write a talent, um, something that you're good at or something that you love doing, I love to do crafts. So the, um, like having to do this as part of my work job, just the best. So not only things am I good, that I'm good at, but I'm also wanting to put the things that I love to do because God made in my heart a love for doing these things for a purpose. So when I put my talents or the things that I love to do in this jar, I'm trying to think, how can I give those gifts back to the Lord Jesus, who was the one who gave me these talents to begin with? And so how can I um, be good at math and um, give that back to the Lord? Well, I can help people who aren't as good with math by um, trying to explain things to them so that they can understand and then also be good at math. I like doing crafts, and so a lot of times I make crafts um, for gifts for people. Um, Miss N just had a birthday, and I made her a shawl. And when I make a craft for a person, I spend a lot of time praying and thinking about them. And so that's another way I can use that talent and give it back to the Lord Jesus. I'm good at playing at Mass. I feel like the, the greatest talent the Lord has blessed me with is this ability to be musical. And I know that that's not something that just comes only because I practice and whatever, but I know that the Lord really um, is pleased with me when I can give that gift back to him at Holy Mass. So that's one of my most favorite talents. That's one of my most favorite things to do. I'm a good writer. Well, except for last week when we were talking in my video about how many times we had grammatical errors in the writing. So sometimes we make mistakes. Miss Michelle's not Jesus, so she's not perfect. Um, but I can use my skills as a writer to share what I love best about Jesus and God and our Catholic faith with you all. See, I'm not good at sports. I can't even put these things in the, in the jar. Okay, well, the tissue paper is kind of in the way. I have nice handwriting, so I can use that talent to write notes to people who are homebound or who can't get out and visit people because it's the COVID and they can't have visitors. I'm a hard worker. I like to work hard, so I can use that talent that God gave me to um, try to do my very best for you guys. I'm a good friend. Well, sometimes. And so um, usually the thing that I like to do best um, by being a good friend is by asking my friends, how can I help them? If they say, oh, I'm having such a crummy day, how can I help you? What can I do to serve you? So those are some of my talents. I filled out a whole, a whole bunch of them, but I'm good at baking. Oh, that's true. I'm good at eating. <laughs> I should have put that on a one. <laughs> so I want you friends to think about some th different things that you're good at. If you're good at reading or writing or math, maybe that's something you want to write on your talent. And maybe that's something you can think about um, helping other people with. Maybe you're good at being a friend. Maybe you're a good listener. I did not write that on one of my coins because I am a bad listener because I like to hear myself talk too much. That's why these videos are long. And so once you have all your talents in your jar, I want you to keep this in a special place. And when you're feeling like you don't know if maybe if God loves you 
or if other people love you, I want you to take out your talents and look at them because those are God's gifts to you. Those are how God reveals his goodness and his love and care for you. So keep these talents handy. It would really be nice if you could send me some pictures of what your talent jars look like. That would really make my heart happy. So that's how you can complete your talent jar craft. Um, my second grade friends, I'm going to send home for you your first communion workbooks. You can begin working on this, or you can do the talent jar activity this week. Um, I wanted you to have this sooner rather than later, so that's why I'm sending it home right now. Third grade, I've already explained to you the jars. So you're all set to go, fourth graders. Keep working on your table tents. Today you are going to be hearing the presentation of parables. Okay, so this, this assignment, mom and dad, um, or an older brother or sister, I would like them to help you with. Um, so it says the parables are found on page five of this packet. Read each parable very slowly and carefully to your child reading each one at least three times. Okay, so that sounds kind of daunting. Oh, I gotta read all these things for Miss Michelle three times. They're really short. Okay, let's get there. Do, do, do. Here we go. The first parable is the parable of the mustard seed. He proposed another parable to them that he means Jesus. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when fully grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. So that's very short. You can read that a couple of times. And then the next one is about the pearl of great price. Oh, that's one of my favorite parables. So after you have read those parables a couple of times and you are thinking about them, I want you to answer the questions on your parable sheet. So put your name and your date on there. And then it might be easier for um, mom or dad to read you the question and then for them to write down your answers. But you can write them down for yourself as well. So the first question is, how big did Jesus say the mustard seed was? What did Jesus say about how it grew? How do you think it grew? So those are some of the questions I want you to think so that you can uh, about so that you can really try to understand what it is that Jesus is saying to us in this parable. The interesting things about parables and Jesus is that Jesus used the parables to try to explain concepts to the people of his time. So he talked a lot about different things like farming, like unless you plant a, a grain of wheat in the ground and it dies, that sort of thing, because that's what the people of, his, of Jesus' day did. The tricky thing about parables is that while Jesus is trying to explain to us what the kingdom of God is like, in order to fully understand what a parable is talking about, you have to sit and pray with that parable for a long time. And that's part of uh, what makes the Word of God a living thing. Every time we read it and we think about it and we pray over it, the Holy Spirit can give us a different thought or help us to understand it in a different way. And that's why a lot of people read Scripture passages over and over and over because they get something new from it each time they read it. And that's really beautiful. And so um, once, you're com once you've completed all of those questions on your parables worksheet, then you can spend some time working on your Christmas craft also. Um, the Christmas craft, um, I, I will need you to bring back to me no later than December 7th because that's when they are going to start judging for the contest. Excuse me. So once you're done with those things, you are all set for this week. Good job, fourth grade. Fifth grade, you have an interesting week this week. You are going to be learning about a form of prayer called a litany. So on your work, it says, describe what a litany is and give some examples. Okay, so I'm going to describe for, your, um, for you what a litany is. Litany is a form of prayer that is repetitive. And we 
use a litany to help us to focus in on what is most essential. There are a whole bunch of uh, examples attached in the back of your um, overview packet. This is the litany of trust. Um, those of us, we have a team of, of, of people on our parish staff who do ministry like I do. So I minister to elementary school fam um, friends and their families. Miss Elizabeth uh, uh, ministers to middle schoolers and high schools and their families. Mrs. Vadney ministers to families. And so we all have these different roles, but we all get together every Wednesday at 1.30 and we pray this litany of trust together. And so you'll see that we're asking for Jesus to, to do something for us in these first bits. So from the belief that I have to earn your love, and then we all respond, deliver me, Jesus. So we have an ask, deliver me, Jesus. Ask for something, deliver me, Jesus. Ask for something, deliver me, Jesus. For this whole column. And then the second part of a litany is where, so here we're asking for Jesus to deliver us or to do these things. In this column, we're asking Jesus to show our hearts the truth about himself. That you are continually holding me, sustaining me, loving me. Jesus, I trust in you. And so that, um, that's really how a litany is broken apart. And there are all these different examples. There's a litany of the saints. There's a litany of humility. Oh, this is beautiful. Um, let me, oh, that's all. Those are all of them. So you can take from here, from those litanies, um, or just other things that are on your heart and um, start thinking about a list of things that you would like to um, God to show in your heart. And so then I made these beautiful cards for you to write your own litany. So here's the picture of um, the divine mercy of Jesus. It says, Jesus, I trust in you. And then on the inside of your cards, um, you can have the litany of anything. So um, the thing that maybe I would like to write a litany about is maybe the litany of patience. And then here it says, from the, from the need to know the answers right away, deliver me, Jesus. And then that's already written here for you. So that was, be, might be something um, that I would start with. That's all on that first page, just like we showed in the litany of trust in the example pack. On the second side of your card, you're going to have a chance to ask Jesus to reveal those truths about himself. That you will show to me your goodness in your time. Jesus, I trust in you. So those are just some things that the Holy Spirit plopped into my noggin, like just right now. Um, and so just spend a little bit of time thinking about these things and then complete this. Um, this kind of material is a, it's a real nice card. It's kind of silky, but you should be able to use a pen. Um, I wouldn't recommend anything like a gel pen because it'll probably like rub right off. But if you use the pencil or a ballpoint pen, that would really be a nice thing there. So if you're having, if you're getting stuck, like oh, I don't know what to write, that happens. Don't reinvent the wheel. Look to um, one of the example litanies that others may be loved more than I. Jesus, I trust in you. Those sort of things. Um, oops, there are some really beautiful ones. This litany of trust is really good. This is something that I really like. feel like I need to hear. That you give me all the strength I need for what is asked. Jesus, I trust in you. This is a good one. That your plan is better than anything else. Jesus, I trust in you. Um, that's a thing that I like almost need to get tattooed on myself because <laughs> I have a hard time sometimes accepting that God knows more than what I know in my tiny little brain. Um, and what, so when you are finished with that then you and you have completed your litany card, I would like you to keep this someplace handy so that maybe before bedtime or maybe when you wake up in the morning, you can just kind of glance at this and really ask the Lord Jesus to um, fill your heart with the things that he would like you to hear, um, the love that he would like to give to you this week. Okay, I think that that's about it. Um, 
So hopefully um, you have everything that you need. If you have any questions, if you um, have any prayer requests, please send those to me. Please, please, please um, send the prayer requests. And since we are here in front of the Blessed Mother, um, let us close in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh, Blessed Mother, please grant us the grace to seek your Son, Jesus, in all of our moments. Please help us through the day. Please watch over our own mothers and guide them to lead us closer to your Son, Jesus. We ask this in your name as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.